Hey, what's going on, everybody? Welcome back to Sense of South Jersey with me, Kellen, uh, for a fragrance review today. Um, today, I'm going to take a look at another classic uh, fragrance I kind of slept on for a while, and I recently was gifted a bottle of it. It's actually a vintage bottle, and it really just kind of blew my mind, so I thought I had to review it. I've been wearing it for about two weeks straight now. Um, it's a fragrance that's from the year 1984. It's classified as an oriental woody fragrance, and I think that's the perfect classification for this scent. Um, it's from a house I'm not too familiar with. I've, I've only seen a couple of their scents at rack stores and they're very of the era in terms of that 80s vibe and it is none other than Giorgio Beverly Hills for men. So as always, we'll take a look at the box and the bottle presentation and then I'll go over its notes. I'll talk about its performance on my skin. I'll give it my overall thoughts and then my overall rating. So we'll, we'll jump right into the presentation. So we'll take a look at the box. Just let that sit there for a minute there, get the thumbnail working. You can see that there. It's a really, really cool box. I actually like this. So first, the color scheme. Um, right off the bat, what jumps out at me are the yellow and white lines that are all up and down the box on all sides. It's pretty interesting. It kind of reminds me of like an umbrella or cabana at some sort of maybe beach club or hotel resort in the either, you know, in Florida, California, somewhere out west. It's pretty cool looking. And you can see there in black lettering, it says Giorgio. And then you got two red horses on the side with what looks like a horse-shaped statue on a stand. And, and then in red, it says Giorgio there again there. And a red outline silver letters and Beverly Hills for men. It's got this silver line that actually wraps all the way around the box. And as you can see here on the sides and top, you don't really have anything going on. On the bottom, you do have a barcode and then you have a stamp. Can't really see it on this camera, but you have a stamped in batch code. On the back, you have eau de toilette, some brand information here, ingredients, etc., um, and made in the USA. So, um, funny story with this fragrance is my supervisor, the owner of the company that I work for, this was his scent. He told me this was his scent in the 80s. He wore it all the time. He bought dozens of bottles of it, he said, and he gifted this to me. It was my birthday was recently, and he gifted this to me. And I had only experienced the one that you can get it like the discount stores and the color is completely different from this bottle to what the new formulation is too. So I don't have much experience with the new formulation, but this one is incredible. Let's talk about the notes. As most 80s powerhouse scents, the notes are, there's a ton of them in there. So we'll go with the top. We have aldehydes, orange, fruity notes, and bergamot. In the heart of the fragrance, you have carnation, sandalwood, patchouli, cinnamon, orris root, cedar, and rose. The base, you're gonna get honey, tonka bean, amber, musk, benzoin, oak moss, and vanilla. Now, to me, the notes that stand out the most, right off the top, you're gonna get that aldehyde and that kind of bitter orange scent that comes to me very strong. In the heart, you definitely get the woodiness. That's where the woodiness of this fragrance kind of comes into play with the patchouli, the cinnamon, and the sandalwood. And then the base, honey, amber, and musk, and vanilla, I think are the most prevalent notes. And you get that a lot too, so. Um, Let's take a look at the bottle. Kind of jumped ahead and went with the notes, but let's take a look at the bottle for the presentation there. Sorry, guys. Open the box. You kind of got the ribbed card, padded cardboard here. You can take a look here at the bottle. The bottle's really, really cool. Really thick glass, ribbed all the way around there. The juice, instead of that light green color that you see in the new formulation, is this almost like whiskey brown. It's got this thick embossed logo here that says Giorgio Beverly Hills. It's actually a carbon copy of that symbol. Obviously, no color. The cap is like this circular silver, and it says Giorgio Beverly Hills wrapped all the way around here. I would not recommend lifting it up by the cap because that doesn't cut, that comes off pretty easily. It doesn't stay on that snug. And you got a silver atomizer. On the bottom here, you got this sticker with some of the brand information there. And on the back, again, you don't really have anything. But the glass, you can hear that? Very, very thick glass. This is a very well-made bottle. We'll take a look at the distribution. Nice big spray. That's pretty good distribution. Um, here, I'm going to put some on this hand. So we have the opening, I do have the dry down on this wrist. Um, so yeah, right off the bat, you get that kind of sour fruit aldehyde, that orange peel, that sticks out to me the most for sure. It's a, it's a great smell. So um, performance. Performance for Giorgio Beverly Hills for me is great. I consider this a beast mode scent. There's no question I get at least nine to 10 plus hours with this fragrance. As soon as you apply it, the projection, you're gonna have a three hour time frame where that's gonna project. When you enter the room, people are gonna know that you're there because of how strong it is. The sillage, the scent trail is about the same time. Um, the second half of the fragrance phase life cycle, I'd say you're gonna get about two arms length distance, so a couple feet, people are still gonna be able to smell it. It only becomes a skin scent, I would say, in the final hour and a half of the fragrance, but it's gonna sit 
a little bit further off the skin. You don't have to dig your nose into your wrist to be able to detect the scent. It'll stick to clothes very, very well. Um, I think it's a great performer and it's definitely a 80s powerhouse for sure. It falls right into that category. So Georgia Beverly Hills, my thoughts on this fragrance. It's a, it's a great, great scent. I didn't really like the uh, new formulation when I tried it. I tried it once. I kind of thought it didn't smell like much. It was very alcoholic. This is completely different. It's deeper. And again, the performance, I'm basing it off the vintage version. I do not own the new formulation. I would have never owned this fragrance if it wasn't gifted to me by my supervisor. So, um, uh, you know, I, I really like it. it. It's definitely of the era for sure. Um, it definitely has that classic vibe. It's definitely a strong scent too. So um, it's got that classic feel. It opens again with that really warm citrus and then it dries down into that woody scent and then the final, that honey, that musk. It's, it's very rich. It's a very rich scent too, very masculine. Definitely going to be a scent that um, I think age range is going to be 30 plus are going to enjoy this fragrance. I think this is going to be a fall, winter, spring scent. A little bit heavy for the summer. I wouldn't rock this in the heat at all. Um, it's a mature scent too. So maybe even that age range is a little low. I'm just basing that on my age because I like classic scents like this. Um, again, I think that this is going to be best for formal setting, semi-formal. You could wear it to work. Um, I would say apply lightly, maybe one, two sprays max because again, it carries a, a powerful scent trail like I had mentioned. But uh, I could see this being, you know, like it's a very gentleman-like fragrance. This isn't a casual thing. This isn't something I'd wear out to a nightclub or bar or anything like that. I wear this to maybe like a formal business meeting or if I had a suit and tie type of thing, you could wear this. It's going gonna, it's gonna to make a statement if you had an important, like I said, meeting you had to go through for work. This is a good scent for this. This could be a daily fragrance. My boss, he'd explain that this was something he wore daily, but someone that's not as into fragrances would wear any scent that they own daily and not really think anything of it too. Um, but as long as they're enjoying it, that's obviously what matters. So this is... Um, Mentioned cooler weather seasons. It's not that versatile in the sense that, you know, I'm, I can't wear, I can't say I can wear it anywhere I'd like. I would say more formal, more important work meetings. You can dress it up a little bit. I wouldn't wear this with like t-shirt and jeans at all or anything like that, but it does smell very nice and I'm absolutely happy that I have it in my collection now. So if we could give Giorgio Beverly Hills for Men an overall rating here, I'd say on the presentation, I really like the box and I really like the bottle. Um, I'd say I'm going to give it an 8 out of 10 for sure. I just wish that this stayed on a little bit better. I think that that's dangerous because it could fall and break. Um, Performance-wise, it's a beast mode, 9 out of 10 for sure. And the smell, it smells awesome. The dry down is amazing. It, you know, it reminds me of a couple fragrances. It's like a mix of Aqua de Parma Colonia in the dry down, that citrus musk and of course um, Paul Sebastian because it's got that rich cinnamon in it. So those two combination kind of is the vibe I get from this. Um, obviously it's not exactly like either one of them, but those are the first two that came to mind when I was wearing it and I love both of those smells. So it's, but it's got its own uniqueness too. It's just losing a little bit of points in my book where the fact that is I feel like I can't wear it too, too many places due to how heavy it is. But in the places that you can wear it or times or settings you can wear this fragrance, it's, um, it's a great one to choose to wear. Uh, so I'm gonna have to give it for smell an eight out of 10. So overall, Giorgio for Beverly Hills, Rating from Sense of South Jersey is going to be um, an 8 out of 10. I think it's a, it's a solid fragrance. It smells good. I'm really happy to have it, and I love how strong it is too. So when you see this box um, and you see this bottle, if you can get a vintage version of it, absolutely check it out. It's really cool. You'll immediately notice the difference with the color of the juice from the one that I have here or a vintage one um, to what the new formulation is. I can't speak on how that one smells or how it performs because I only had it only for um, a few days before I gave it away because upon initially upon uh, smelling it, I didn't like it. But when I was gifted this one, I really obviously put a dent in it. So um, yeah, it's definitely a good one to, to pick up if you can too. So if any of you guys have any experience with the new formulation, please let me know how it is. Let me know if there's that much difference because if there isn't that much difference when this is done, I probably will pick that one up. I have in the mail on the way here um, the aftershave and the aftershave bomb because they do offer that. So, um, yeah, eight out of 10 for Georgia Beverly Hills. I really like this one. So let me know what your thoughts are on this fragrance. Let me know if you like the video. I'm having some help with people editing my videos to give some intros. So if you guys like the changes, I hope you do. Um, we're over 500 subscribers. So I'm just really happy. Just want to say thank you to everybody who is commenting, liking, subscribing, you know, interacting. It's a lot of fun for me. And uh, I hope you're enjoying these videos. If some of you guys are stuck quarantined at home, obviously given the circumstances out that's going on in our country and around the world, uh, hopefully if you're bored and you got nothing to do, <laughs> you can enjoy a fragrance video too. So thanks again so much, guys. Talk to you soon. Goodbye for now.